wanted to sit down and film a video basically talking through camera basics for concert photography. So first I'll be walking through some beginner tips for low light photography for concerts and music festivals, and then I'll be sharing some examples of photos I've taken with the exact settings I've used. So my first tip is to always, always, always shoot in RAW. Shooting in RAW is really important, especially for concert photography, because you're shooting in such low light, so you want to be able to preserve your highlights while also being able to recover your shadows. And this is also really great because it gives you a lot of flexibility with adjusting for colors, especially for blue, red, purple light. You're able to kind of recover a lot of the detail or kind of change the colors to how you would like them to be in post, and that's something that JPEG doesn't really allow you, so I always, always, always recommend shooting in RAW. And then in line with that, I always, always recommend shooting in manual. It just gives you so much more control. And I think that this is especially important for concert photography because you really want to be making adjustments on the fly instead of just kind of allowing your camera to dictate because I think especially with lasers or just like lights that are constantly moving around, you want to be able to, or I like to underexpose. And if you're just shooting on auto exposure, it kind of will throw things off. So in my opinion, it's always better to underexpose, especially for pyro, because when you're shooting raw, you can really underexpose and then you're able to recover the shadows in post when you're editing. But if you're kind of exposing for like normal like stage settings, whether you're shooting from stage or shooting from crowd and then the pyro happens, you've completely like overexposed or blown out your highlights where the actual pyro is. And especially for like pyro and special effects, things like that, once the highlights are kind of blown out, there's no way to recover them even if you're shooting in RAW. So I always recommend underexposing at least a full stop, or that's what I like to do personally because I find that it gives me the most control over my images in post. And even if the image is a little darker than I'd like it to be, I find that that's always something that is mostly fixable in Lightroom. If your image is even slightly overexposed, no matter how good you are at editing, there's really no way to kind of get that back. So typically when I'm shooting in manual, what I like to do is adjust ISO first, then sometimes shutter speed, and sometimes after that aperture, but I usually never touch aperture. For ISO, I personally like to never go above 1600 if I can help it. Sometimes I'll go 3200 if I'm shooting in a club or somewhere that's super dark. But I find that typically for festivals and venues with better production and therefore better lighting, usually I'm somewhere between ISO 400 and ISO 800. This is specifically for EDM though, where there's a lot of special effects like pyro, so you don't want to miss those, so I like to underexpose for that. And then for indoor venues, usually I find that I'm somewhere between ISO 800 and ISO 1600, and then like I mentioned, if it's super dark or I just can't really get the shot that I want at the ISO that I'm at, I'll bump it up to 3200, but I don't usually try to go past that. One caveat I will say is that for a lot of this year, I've been shooting on a full-frame DSLR, the Nikon D4, and because that camera is a little bit older, it doesn't handle low light as well. And now that I'm shooting on the Sony a7 IV, which is the camera that I'm recording on right here, I find that the low light performance is obviously significantly better, so I do feel more comfortable bumping the ISO. So maybe me underexposing is just like a habit of me shooting on my D4. And then next, shutter speed. So this is usually what I adjust after I adjust ISO if I find that the image isn't really exposed how I want or isn't really looking how I want. As a rule of thumb, I like to never go below 1 200th of a second. So I like to shoot my images crisp without motion blur, but obviously if you're looking for like motion blur or like artistic effects, like feel free to play with shutter speed. But I've just found that, at least for me personally, when shooting, going below 1 200th of a second just introduces a little bit too much motion blur for my taste. But honestly, if I can help it, I usually try to stay above 1 400th of a second. I just find that it gives me like crisper images and I'd rather adjust the ISO if possible or play around with the image in post to get the exposure the way that I'd want it to. For concert photography, I shoot primarily on telephoto lenses rather than prime. So I have the 24 to 70, the 14 to 24, and then the 70 to 200. So usually the smallest aperture is 2.8. I've also used lenses before, like borrowed from friends or rented where the lowest aperture is 4.0, so usually I'll try to stick with the lowest aperture. So generally, as a rule of thumb, when using the lenses that I have, I try to shoot as wide open as possible just because it is low light, so I want to let in as much light as possible. But one note is that if I'm shooting pyro, sometimes I do like to bring the aperture up from 2.8 to 4.0. I just find that it gives me a little bit more control over other things like shutter speed and ISO, because then I'll be able to bring ISO down to 100 and then 
Usually I can play around with shutter speed then to see what gives me the best effect. For most photos, I'll start with the aperture at 1 400th of a second, the aperture at 2.8, and then the ISO at 400, and then I'll go up and down from there. Like I said, I'll adjust ISO first, and then I'll adjust shutter speed, and then sometimes I'll touch aperture if it isn't giving me the effect that I'd like. And then for Pyro, as I mentioned, usually I'll start with my shutter speed at 1 1,000th of a second, my aperture at 4.0, and then my ISO at 100. I found that shooting with a faster shutter speed and a higher ISO usually allows for me to capture more details without overexposing the image. So now I wanted to talk through some photos that I've taken in different settings and the exact settings I use to get those photos. So the first category of images that I wanted to talk through are images that are taken outdoors, either at music festivals or at venues with high quality production. So this first photo is taken of Madion during his live show at the Frost Amphitheater in Stanford. My shutter speed was at 1 200th of a second, my aperture was at 2.8, and my ISO was at 200. So the reason that I actually slowed down the shutter speed was to try to get more motion blur in his images for more of that dreamy effect, which I feel like is just really characteristic of how I envision Madion shows and how a lot of his artwork appears. And then this next photo was of Porter Robinson at Heart Summer. This was my second music festival that I ever shot, so this is a super sentimental image for me personally. For this image, the shutter speed was 1 400th of a second, the aperture was 2.8, and the ISO was 200. And then the next category of images that I wanted to talk through is outdoor pyro, so this includes flames, fireworks. I think that they're all generally referred to as pyros, so that's what I call them. But usually when I say pyro, I mean the flames. This first photo was taken of Cascade at Imagine Music Festival. Because I was shooting from right on stage behind him, I knew that the pyro would really expose the scene around him, so I brought the shutter speed down to 1 1,000th of a second, the aperture to 4.0, and the ISO to 100. This next image was shot during Elenium set at Imagine Music Festival. This time I was shooting from front of house, so I was significantly farther away from stage. So my shutter speed was 1 400th of a second, my aperture was 4.0, and my ISO was 200. And this last image was shot during Porter Robinson's set at Second Sky this year. My shutter speed was 1 800th of a second, my aperture was 2.8, and my ISO was 800. And then moving on to indoors, I wanted to share images that were taken indoors in low light. This first image is of Porter Robinson during the Second Sky after party, so my shutter speed was 1 400th of a second, my aperture was 2.8 and my ISO was 1600. And this next image was taken of Audion at 1015 Folsom, which is a club or smaller music venue in San Francisco. So my shutter speed was 1 400th of a second, my aperture was 4.0, this was because the lens that I was shooting on, the widest open it could shoot was 4.0, and the ISO was 800 to compensate for that. The last category that I'll be talking about is indoors pyro. So for most venues, you can't do like the flames or actual pyro indoors. Usually people do CO2, confetti, sometimes like little mini fireworks. So both of the images that I'll be talking through for this category were taken at Bill Graham Civic Auditorium this year during Breakaway Bay Area, which was a music festival. This first image was of Set the Sky. My shutter speed was 1 400th of a second, my aperture was 4.0, and my ISO was 800. And this next image, taken during Griffin set, very similar settings, shutter speed was 1 400th of a second, aperture was 4.0, and ISO was 400. I remember when I first started doing concert photography, I was googling a lot of similar videos. I feel like I kind of knew, like, the concept of concert photography, but I wanted, like, a walkthrough of, like, how people were actually shooting, what settings they were using, camera basics, things like that. So hopefully this video was helpful for at least one person. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments down below or if there's any other videos that you guys would like to see me film.